the Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. So let's come and magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Our Lord liveth, and blessed be our rock, and let the God of our salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, I just love that one. It's so cheerful. Yes, the Lord lives. And he is a rock. He's the God of our salvation. So we will come and magnify him, right? On this October 23, on this October 23, we will magnify the Lord. And we will read from this most exciting prophet of the Lord, Jeremiah, Yermiyahu, chapter 42 and up to 44. <clears throat> so we're going to cover a lot of ground today, and let's see what he had to say to those people back then. Boy, we have read, we have read 41 chapters of disobedience, haven't we? Of unbelief, over and over again, and yet, and yet, he loves them. He loves his people. Amen. And he loves you people. He loves you with a love that you can't find anywhere else. So we are here to find out more about our precious God, to know him more intimately, this precious Savior Jesus, that we might be obedient. We might not be the ones <clears throat> that repeat all of that mistake. Now all the captains of the forces, Yohanan, the son of Kariah, Yezaniah, the son of Hoshiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest came near, and they said to Yermiyahu the prophet, Please let our petition be acceptable to you, and pray for us to the Lord your God. <clears throat> Notice that <laughs> when, when there's sin around and there's disobedience, it's not our God, my God, it's your God. Please pray for us to the Lord your God for all this remnant, since we are left but a few of many. You would think even that would wake them up, wouldn't you? They're down to just a few left. Wow. But a few of many, as you can see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Lord's been, he, he can see. That the Lord your God may show us the way in which we should walk and the thing we should do. And about now, wouldn't you think Jeremiah would just like to say, no. <laughs> you haven't listened. You haven't done what he said, you're asking me again, but we have a faithful, faithful prophet. And then Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard indeed. I will pray to the Lord your God. Pray to the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall be that whatever the Lord answers you, I will declare it to you. I will keep nothing back from you. And I love it that he warns them. That he warns them, I will keep nothing back. So they said to Jeremiah, Let the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not do according to everything which the Lord your God 
sends us by you. <clears throat> Whether it is pleasing or displeasing. They're saying this now. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God. <clears throat> That's the first time that they've said our God. The, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. All right, they have finally come around to spitting out some words, haven't they? And it happened after 10 days. So did the Lord speak right up? Oh, let me tell you. No. 10 days. Silence. Waiting, waiting. It happened after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Yermiyahu. And then he called Yohanan, the son of Keria, all the captains of the forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest. And they said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your petition before him. If you will still remain in this land, then I will build you and not pull you down. And I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I relent. How about that? I relent concerning the disaster that I have brought upon you. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. And he's saying, don't be. Do not be afraid of him, says the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand, and I will show you mercy, that he may have mercy on you and cause you to return to your own land. But if you say, we will not dwell in this land, disobeying the voice of the Lord your God, saying, no, but we will go to the land of Egypt where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor be hungry for bread. And so see, listen to that. I mean, they have their minds made up for these reasons, these conditions. They're putting all these conditions that the Lord's saying, trying to tell them, I'll take care of it. They're still hanging on to those fears. And there we will dwell, they say. Then hear now the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If you wholly set your faces to enter Egypt and go to dwell there, then it shall be that the sword which you feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, the famine of which you were afraid, shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there you shall die. Uh, that ought to be a whole lot more fear in those words than what they said. <clears throat> so shall it be with all the men who set their faces to go to Egypt to dwell there. They shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the disaster that I will bring upon them. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so will my fury be poured out on you when you enter Egypt. And you shall be an oath, an astonishment, a curse, and a reproach. And you shall see this place no more. I don't know how the Lord can make it any plainer, do you? The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. 
Know certainly that I have admonished you this day, for you were hypocrites in your hearts when you sent me to the Lord your God. Boy, now Jeremiah's going to add his two cents, and it's worth a whole lot more than two cents. For you were hypocrites in your hearts when you sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us to the Lord our God, and according to all that the Lord your God says. So declare to us, and we will do it. And I have this day declared it to you. But you've not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, or anything which he has sent you by me. Now therefore, Know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place where you desire to go to dwell. <clears throat> now, how, we will, how will we apply that, y'all, to us? Well, let me ask myself. I'll keep you out of it, okay? Jane? Are you going to make the same little sin mistakes today that, that you, um, you prayed about and asked the Lord to forgive you for yesterday? Think it over, Jane. I am. We move right along to chapter 43. Now it happened when Jeremiah had stopped speaking to all the people all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, all these words, that Asariah, the son of Hoshiah, Yohanan, the son of Kariah, and all the proud men spoke, saying to Jeremiah, You speak falsely. The Lord our God has not sent you to say, do not go to Egypt to dwell there. Um, I don't know. I'm not so sure that our behavior a lot of times is just as bad. But Baruch, the son of Neria, has set you against us. Oh, there, we always find somebody else in the picture to blame, right? Oh, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, has set you against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans that they may put us to death or carry us away captive to Babylon. So Yohanan, the son of Keriah, all the captains of the forces and all the people would not obey the voice of the Lord to remain in the land of Judah. And isn't that something? <clears throat> he isn't even asking them to pack up and do something hard, go somewhere that where it's going to be a long, terrible, hard journey. He's just saying, stay put. Just stay where you are. You don't have to leave. You don't have to move. Stay right where you are. But... Yohanan, the son of Keriah, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah who had returned to dwell in the land of Judah from all nations where they had been driven, men, women, children, the king's daughters, and every person whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Neriah. So they went to the land of Egypt, for they did not obey the voice of the Lord. And they went as far as Tapanes. So off they go. Off they go. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah in Tapanes. <laughs> so he went too, huh? Saying, take large stones in your hand and hide them in the sight of the men of Judah in the clay, in the brick courtyard, which is at the entrance to Pharaoh's house in Tapanes. 
and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and bring Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, my servant. Oh, they didn't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, as a matter of fact. King of Babylon, your servant? There it is. And will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden, and he will spread his royal pavilion over them. When he comes, he shall strike the land of Egypt and deliver to death those appointed for death and to captivity those appointed for captivity, and to the sword those appointed for the sword. I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captive, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd puts on his garment and he shall go out from there in peace. He shall also break the sacred pillars of Beit Shemesh that are in the land of Egypt and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians. He shall burn with fire. And we move along to chapter 44 of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah. <clears throat> the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews who dwell in the land of Egypt, who dwell at Migdal, at Tapanes, at Nope, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have seen all the calamity that I have brought on Jerusalem and on all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no one dwells in them. How about that? <clears throat> I mean, they have disobeyed themselves right down to all of them have been put out of their homeland. Because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods whom they did not know, they nor you nor your fathers. However, I have sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not do this abominable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn no incense to other gods. So my fury and my anger were poured out and kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as it is this day. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, why do you commit this great evil against yourselves? <laughs> God's not hurting. They're hurting. <clears throat> why do you commit this great evil against yourselves to cut off from you man and woman child and infant out of Judah, leaving none to remain, in that you provoke me to wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense to other gods in the land of Egypt where you have gone to dwell, that you may cut yourselves off and be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, the wickedness of the kings of Judah, the wickedness of their wives, your own wickedness, 
and the wickedness of your wives which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, They have not been humbled to this day, nor have they feared. They have not walked in my law or in my statutes that I set before you and your fathers. Therefore, woo, when you get to therefore, take a deep breath. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will set my face against you for catastrophe and for cutting off all Judah. And I will take the remnant of Judah who have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to dwell there, and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine. Famine is a horrible, long, drawn out, painful, terrible thing. They shall die from the least to the greatest by the sword and by famine. And they shall be an oath, an astonishment. And I'll tell you what, the meaning of this word astonishment here is much stronger than you and I use that word. A curse and a reproach. For I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah who have gone into the land of Egypt to dwell there shall escape. They can't even escape after they get there or survive, lest they return to the land of Judah to which they desire to return and dwell, for none shall return except those who escape. So he's saying some of them are gonna. And then all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to other gods, with all the women who stood by, a great multitude, and all the people who dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. But we will certainly do whatever has gone out of our own mouth, to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings to her. See what's still in them? I mean, now they're spitting out the real truth from their hearts. To burn incense to the queen of heaven. Queen? Who's queen? And pour out drink offerings to her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then... We had plenty of food, were well off, and saw no trouble. But since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. All these words, these are all the words that Jeremiah gave them from the Lord. Only they're twisting them for their own meaning. And that remains the big sin, the big demonic forces, the demons still running around the earth, isn't it? We take words and we frame them the way we want them. And pour out drink offerings to her without our husband's permission question mark. And then Jeremiah, Yermiahu, spoke to all the people, the men, the women, and all the people who had given him that answer, saying, the incense that you burned in the cities of Judah 
and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings, and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them? And did it not come into his mind? So the Lord could no longer bear it because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you committed. Therefore, your land is a desolation, an astonishment, a curse, and without inhabitant as it is this day. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord or walked in his law, in his statutes, or in his testimonies, therefore this calamity has happened to you as at this day. How about that? Hmm? Woo! Lord Jesus, please show us any secret sins. Show us, Lord, any stubbornness, any disobedience to you from reading this word. Show us, Lord, if there's anything we need to bow down and repent to you. Amen? Amen. We move along. Y'all to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And while, while you are getting that, <clears throat> and a bunch of you are here, <clears throat> I'd like to share something with you. And if you have a pen, you might want to write, write this down. Uh, the Lord woke me up at 2, 2 o'clock this morning. And a lot of times I just lay there and pray. But I felt really led to touch my cell phone which you know at two in the morning it comes on like a spotlight okay so i adjusted my eyes and i was led to go to youtube um to elijah uh, list um his program and i love the prophet Robin D. Bullock, okay, and, and his, he can go, you can go to Robin, middle initial D, Bullock.com, he's on YouTube, but uh, uh, Steve has him on his show quite a bit, and he told the most incredible story of going to New York City and pulling down this major, major demonic stronghold and how the people all over the city felt this awesome relief. I mean, it's really, it's the cutting edge of what God is doing right now. And, and I encourage you to go see it. And the, the title of it, here's the title, is called Intelligence Briefing with Robin and Steve, Episode 23. Episode 23. And I'm going to write this on my website when I get off of here. Okay, and then he also asked us, and I've been praying for this young man. To he, he said, this young man, Madison Cawthorn, and and he's a rep, a rep in North Carolina, and he he's in a wheel wheelchair, but oh, he he's on fire. This this young man, I've been praying for him. Matter of fact, I I sent him an offering too. I just felt led, and I I don't do a whole lot of that. Um, he asked us to pray for him, and I went, whoa! I've been in. I've been paying attention to this young man. So it made me, uh, it, it, was, it was like a, a tiny satisfaction to say, I am hearing the Lord. I am hearing the Lord because this is quite a prophet here and this is what he's saying. So this pulling down of this stronghold happened in New York City on October 16th. October 16th. And it, you know, this, this, whole, this whole last week, 10 days, I've just felt like, a bunch of stuff was happening. Second Timothy, you therefore, my son, Paul says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, they probably want to say, oh, okay. First, you start telling me something really good, and then, then you tell me I'm going to endure hardship. Yes, we run against the current of this new world system. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Thank you, Connie. She's putting that on there for y'all. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, these are good words, y'all. Check out Kathy's graphics. She has some beautiful graphics of these select portions here. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. Oh boy, he names two guys who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past. And they overthrow the faith of some. Oh, be very careful. And, and in that intelligence briefing, Robin talks a lot about faith. Oh, it, it's beautiful. You, you will love it. All right. So these guys were saying that the resurrection's already passed and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows the who are his. The Lord knows. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, in other words, the ones that bring dishonor, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful 
for the master, prepared for every good work. Oh, that's what we want, don't we? That's what we want to happen, that we feel prepared for every good work. You never know when he's going to cause you to take a right-hand turn and do something that's brand new. You never, never did it before. And you will be faced with that decision to obey, not to obey. All right, we move right along with Psalms 92 and a portion of 93. Psalms 92. And it says here for me, <clears throat> I don't know what it says in, in your version. I, I hope most of you have this version. A song for the Shabbat day, for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Oh, I can just hear those words being sung. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. On an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Oh, Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. Wow. How about that thought? <clears throat> but you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered, scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. Oh, check out Kathy's graphics. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. Woo! Hallelujah! I like that. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. And I never even thought about those, those words when this morning I felt led to sing, the Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. And there we have it. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Oh, I marvel how the Lord, he will weave things together that I don't even, I didn't know beforehand. The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. And that's where he remains God, because we can't really get a hold of that, can we? I mean, we want to say, okay, what day was God born? I mean, who did that? He, he is, your throne is, established from old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. 
the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waves, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Boy, we could go into the Messiah on the end of that, couldn't we? All right, y'all. Wow, what a magnificent bunch of scriptures. We wrap it up with Proverbs 26, 3 through 5. Proverbs chapter 26, 3 through 5. Kathy has a beauty of this one, too. Two guys racing on their horses. A whip for the horse. A bridle for the donkey. And a rod for the fool's back. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. How about that? That is one to chew on. Chew on that one as you go about your day, as you drive down the road, as you go to work or school or to fix and breakfast or whatever it is. Waking up in the middle of the night like me. Maybe some of you are up in the middle of the night and God just had this word just for you. I pray it goes out everywhere. His word, this precious word, Look what we're down to. Not much left of the year, y'all. Let's pray. Father God, oh, we want to thank you, Lord. I mean, day by day, you feed us faithfully. You, you cause us to grow strong. You cause us to become like the image of your son, Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross. Oh, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you that resurrection is there. And you were the first. And like these guys we read about that messed up what resurrection means, Lord, let us take in your word. For we all want to have that hope that when we die, we will just zip right up to heaven to be with you. We will be resurrected from the dead. And if that's your desire, then pray a simple prayer and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and ask him to come into your heart to be your Lord and your Savior. He is the only way you and me have to go to heaven. The only way. So don't, don't waste any more time. We don't know what each day brings. Oh, Father, stir hearts today. Stir hearts to just sell out to you, to just totally yield to you. Father God, I'm asking that for your people in Israel. We, we hold up Israel. We hold up this Jerusalem, this city that is the apple of your eye. Father God, we pray for their peace. But Lord, we're also asking that they be drawn by Ruach HaKodesh, the great Holy Spirit. Draw them, Lord, unto yourself. Be with that <clears throat> army, that idea of Israeli defense force. Father God, please be with the Knesset. This day, this day, Lord, we are realizing that there, there's just a lot of new and extra things coming from you in this month of October. It, it truly, it, it, it's happening. And we are thrilled, Lord, and we are grateful. I hold up America, Lord. I hold up America, and I give you praise for those who are in New York, who pulled down that evil. 
Oh, hallelujah. I was praising him in the night. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have your people, and you have them show up exactly when and where you want. Oh, Father God. Father God, let New York become a place of a great revival. A great revival. All to glorify you, Jesus. Glorify you. Lord, we lift up many, many prayers. Many people who are dear to our hearts, who are having problems or illness. Father God, raise them back up whole, healed. Raise them up to, to appreciate you, know you, appreciate prayer. Oh, Father, we just praise you and praise you. We will sign off here and just keep on going. And we bless you. I bless each and every one of you who have come this morning. God bless you in your faithfulness to seek his face for you, for your life. That pleases the Lord. I just know it does because we read it. Look how displeased he was with the disobedience. So let that be an encouragement to you and me to be obedient today. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.